I haven't found anything of relevance or of any form of beauty mm -hmm. so far in these chapters. Like I could yeah. find it maybe in chapter nine or ten and so on, but so far in the eight chapters I've read so far, all I've read is a lot of fear mongering and criticism against Jews and Christians and what they believe, but at the same time plagiarism from apocryphal Gnostic texts. Hope you're not getting any feedback. What's that? Are you getting any feedback because I've got no 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 you're good. Yeah. You're good. Mike's good. Hey man, I'm doing all right. Hope you're doing all right. Uh, yeah, I can do that, dude. Yeah. Ramadan, kicking it off. Good. You know, some yeah. light reading. Yeah, yeah, What's yeah. on your mind, man? Yeah, no, I've I've been, uh, so you've been reading chapter two. I've been reading through the Quran myself. I've been doing a, to have a clear conscience. I've been keeping to your, like, keeping my promise for you. <laughs> wanting to systematically go verse by verse through the Quran. I'm, I've finished chapter eight. So I'm going to be that. starting chapter nine. But on my channel, I've been going, I've been calling it episodes. Okay. Quranic studies in light of the Bible. So no polemics involved, just raw reading, reaction, reading the critical commentaries, uh, ranging from like Quran X that has the tafsirs that interlink with three or four mainstream Quran translations. And I'm also reading mm -hmm. what the secular scholars say. I've also been reading what, um, just for the sake of, not that I agree with him, but what people like Robert Spencer has done, he's written the, what's called the critical Quran. Mm -hmm. And then you have Gabriel Reynolds, his work, but focusing on like a commentary on the Bible Quran comparison. And then this particular book by Nickel, Gordon Nickel, who he uses a, a, a translation published for Oxford called AJ Raj. So, um, yeah, I, I find I find it quite interesting actually. There's that there's a number of verses that popped out at me that made me go, okay, that's an interesting what Nichols calls a turn of phrase statement. Like you just finish around 138 mm -hmm. in chapter two. Mm -hmm. And a lot of like the Sahi International says, uh, ours is the religion of Allah, who is better than Allah in ordaining religion, and we are worshippers. But mm -hmm. Reynolds will say that um, it should say baptize. The baptism of Allah, who baptizes better than Allah. Some translation mm -hmm. says uh, the dying to, 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 to make color. Who's better at coloring or dying than Allah? Mm -hmm. So I mean, what do then, you make of that from like personal reflection? What's your take on, on something like that? Just I, I want I, I know what the Islamic understanding is. But I'm curious, like, what your personal understanding of something like that is. Like, if someone says to, to baptize, like, what do you know what the equivalent of baptism in Islam is? Yeah. So, I mean, I've I've looked into why, like, what what is what is, um, like, why the concept of baptism in in, in Islam? Because in Christianity, baptism is all about the the notion of we know one day we're going to be buried six mm -hmm. feet under you had the jewish like second temple jews before jesus that treated immersion the word just means to immerse to immersion mm -hmm. into, into water as a form of like cleaning purity ritual stuff mm -hmm. and then christians take that image and say oh uh well if she like according to christian belief if jesus was buried and then rose so this notion of going in the water and then coming out the waters dying and rising in christ mm -hmm. so then Fast forward to Islam, I'm thinking, okay, as a Christian, that's my conception of baptism. Mm -hmm. So what is what has baptism got to do with Allah? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing the tafsirs try and communicate the, a sense of pureness with, with to do with color. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, like a couple like things. association, religion, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple things come to mind. So first off. Um, I guess I'm going to go back to my question. I'll answer it for you. So the equivalent of a baptism in Islam is taking your shahada, right? It's basically having that declaration of faith. Now, you first, obviously, you attest it with your voice, and then you it follows suit to, to practice it with your limbs, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to um, 
who used that term of baptism? Because you said Allah is the one that baptizes, right? I think that whoever you're reading may have been trying to uh, level with Christians on some type of like a, a field so that they can understand what the transitionary process is. So um, how does it relate to painting and how does it relate to? So when we say like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of hearts, right? Somebody is going from darkness into light. So their, their heart is um, being painted a different color. And that color is one of purification, right? Because one of right. the a, a very popular supplication is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify my heart and fill my heart with that which he, de he deems pure and to um, polish it almost as if it's a mirror so that it's reflective of that purity, right? So I think what's happening is, is and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't want you to try to think too heavy on the Christian terms and trying to bridge the gap between like the Christian terms and the Islamic terms, but rather it's, um, it's so that you know that the one who changes the heart and the one who conducts that type of baptism, right, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as much as you want to try to change your own heart, you can't. You can conduct the actions, but ultimately you need his permission. So, um, and naturally, remember, if you, if you tuned into the first, and, you know, look, you're on chapter eight, so you read the stuff, but it's, it, he tells you that he will grant you the mercy as long as you stay away from being arrogant, from being defiant, from being envious, from being all the things that he prohibits you from. So in a sense, you are conducting your very own process, and which is part of that baptism right to yep. get that state you know what i'm saying right yeah but my my question to you is what are you baptizing into like why why use the concept of baptism because uh reynolds goes into like the syriac connections to the arabic term and mm -hmm. and how he connects it to a certain third fourth century what's called the gospel of philip that speaks about mm -hmm. and, and then a, a tradition a wahidi tradition mm -hmm. that, that tried to connect it to why the christians baptized earlier and mm -hmm. apparently it's to do with so what you call an ayah like a sign right so mm -hmm. this wahidi tradition says oh when a christian baptized into christ's death then a ayah or a sign appeared to this christian to say now you're a christian or now you're saved mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so my question is i understand what you're saying about Allah makes you clean, this purity mm -hmm. context when you make the when you give the shahada. Mm -hmm. So are you baptizing or are you dipping, so to speak, or are you dying D Y E I and not not dying like death, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Like dying like dying in color. Are yeah. you dying yeah. into into the Qurans? Like I, I or are you doing is this some sort of spiritual thing with Allah? Like what like where are you dipping into yeah. that's my question yeah, yeah so again i um so just to preface like i i'm just trying to be um relational with the terms that you're using we we don't uh associate the quran with anything biblical the quran is its own standalone thing right so like to to understand what the quran is it's the arabic term for what's happening now, the English interpretation of what that may be or what Spencer, where he wants to take it and why he links it to the Bible, to me, that's unnecessary. It's unnecessary to go down that route. You can just look at what the Islamic scholars interpret it as and the definition that's given in the classical Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. So the, is, to the second part of your question, it is a spiritual thing because obviously you're not seeing your heart actually change color. It's rather your entire outlook on life. It's your entire outlook on the existence of God, how to, uh, how to connect with him, how to best earn his pleasure, and so on. So the idea is that um, you are almost conducting a form of spiritual cleansing by leaving 
the darkness and the ignorance as to where you were at, which was being held up by your arrogance, which was being held up by um, whatever other factors that are personally holding you up to now accepting Islam as the only way, as the only um, path towards earning that pleasure of that one deity worthy of worship. Everything else is just kind of water under the bridge in a sense that if we were to try to link any type of external books or any type of, um, you know, Christian takes on things, it mm -hmm. just, it wouldn't work, you know, and, and it's not necessary, you know, it's not like you'd have to find the bridge that's leading from the Bible to um, to the Quran. That's not how it works. The Quran is its own standalone thing. So as you're reading it, though, I really respect that you're checking out the, the works of Spencer and all these guys. Um, even even the Islamic scholarship, I really appreciate, appreciate you going down that route. The Quran will beautifully speak to your very own psychology. And you don't need to venture beyond uh, the basic understanding because you're going to trip yourself up with too much knowledge in a sense that if you are not a Muslim and if you haven't accepted it to be the word of God, then to understand the scholarship behind it is not going to change your acceptance. It's just going to change your intellectual acumen towards whatever that particular, you know, subject is but you can't you know you, you're missing like almost half of the book if you're not a muslim because like yeah. every third or fourth one is like oh you who believe and it's like well i'm not there yeah. yet so, you know what i mean oh just just to bridge just to bridge you beautiful tafsir like muslim tafsir on that verse just to bridge to you what yeah. i find to be quite beautiful so i i have here um uh, As Azra Kash Al Azra. Uh, he mm, says God's can, color. Let's see if I can pull him up. Do you want to paste the link and I can I can follow? Yeah, along sure, with you? sure, sure. All right, yeah. yeah. So you can share it because my internet's a bit shoddy. So um, no worries, no worries. There you go. Uh, let's see. Okay. Go down to um, the second one. So our bars okay. is a bit you know, short. Okay. So God's color, who is more beautiful in color than God? Uh, he, if you skip down, so he quotes the, the verse. Notice he does emphasize anything else is colorless. And, and um, whoever's pure of the color, the color mixes is colored by God's color. So he who has painted a thousand worlds with color, like I, I like that language. That's, that's very nice language. He painted mm. a thousand worlds with color. Why would he buy my color and yours? Oh, bankrupt man. So when someone reaches God's color and falls back on him, he colors him in his own color, which mm. again, beautiful in the same way, the elixir makes copper and iron the same color as itself and they become precious. So that's a little bit of a sarcastic point. It's like, like copper and iron mm -hmm. pretty much share similar colors and we consider them precious. But really, if the estranged fall back on Allah, they become Allah's familiars. And if the disobedient fall back, they become disobedient. And then, uh, so that's, uh, so I'll, I'll pause there because I can show you another one in, uh, let's see here. Kashani down below says it's to do with marking, like creedal marking, like you, you take on Allah's mark in that sense. And then There's the other one, one is Kashani. Yes, under that one. And I've noticed with Kashani, he seems to be like every verse I've read, he seems to be the most idealistic. So he doesn't read it, say, in history or or you know like ibn kathir is very literal and like he re mm -hmm. reads things like he reads history into the text whereas kasani seems to be very like spiritual ideal ideological and mm -hmm. he, he seems to be like application based um now as a christian 
I could say what Azra said there is precisely the argumentation that I see building up through the Bible. So mm -hmm. uh, earlier in chapter two, when it says that Allah chose the Israelites through Abraham out of all the worlds, mm -hmm. and then it, it then you have this chronology, right? Like leading up to the Christian and the Jew. And then, then there's this language of, oh, and now they passed away. And now it's this, the, the final form is now Islam and, you know, you being a Muslim. And as a Christian, when I read the Bible and when I, when I look at, when I do the same application where I'm doing it to the Quran, like the Tafsirs of the Bible, of the past as well, I see this narrative where God, yes, indeed, he, he does choose Israel out of all the people group. All the people groups are under the other gods. Interestingly, the Quran says Abraham wasn't a polytheist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then the end goal is to reclaim back all the lost people, not just the lost so-called lost tribe, but, but pretty much what, what you call the Gentiles as well. Mm -hmm. And so the baptism language or the coloring language, you have... Uh, like if you're talking about it as a mark, you have examples of that which with each nation group. So the Egyptians had, for example, their form of circumcision versus the Jews and their circumcision. Mm -hmm. And then Christianity comes on the scene and goes, by the way, circumcision is just a superstitious thing of, of the flesh. Like it's just a mark or it's kind of like a like a like a tattoo of the flesh. Mm -hmm. No, it this this transcends the you know the known world this is meant to be a type of hence dipping of baptizing in 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 something that affects all of us and that is death and so mm -hmm. the christian message is is that if jesus is god in flesh he defeats the grave he defeats death and if you're baptized in him now you as you know in the new testament there's this notion of he makes all things new Mm -hmm. uh he you, you're a new creature now you're re, you're regenerated with, from a stony heart to a heart of flesh so when i see that tafsir i'm thinking to myself but that doesn't contradict the christian message so there's no i can't conceive of myself bridging over to islam whereas you know because because there's no contradiction there it's it's uh it, it, it's it's ever it, what, what when I when I read the Quran and I find these little gems like 138 I, I think to myself there's a lot of genuine contradictions between the Quran and the Bible mm -hmm. and then here, here are those moments of bridge building where it's like hang on, but that's what we believe mm -hmm. um, so a couple yeah. things um, first uh, you know if you did a basic search on Kashf uh, al-Asrab. It turns out he's a he's a Shia scholar, right? So that he's a heretical viewpoint. Now it doesn't mean that he can't speak truth, right? But what it does mean is that I'd have to really look in detail as to what he's actually saying. So, like for example, you're talking about there's a bridge between the coloring of things, right? Although mm -hmm. there's a credence to what you're saying. The issue is, is that we're in two separate pools. So the first pool is the monotheistic Islamic pool, which you can't just look at a single verse in isolation and say, hey, we have a similarity here and I'm going to use this as a bridge because there's things that are doctrinal, that are creedal, that there's just no budging on which are non-ambiguous and they're stated as clear as day. So for example, where you believe that Jesus, uh, peace be upon him, was in a state where he conquered death, um, the Quran takes a completely different position on it. So we can't build a bridge when the creedal understanding of what actually happened according to the text is different so that's the first thing um the second thing is uh you have to look at it like comprehensively right and as you're looking at the the whole issue comprehensively um we do not believe that 
God uh, can even uh, not, he would never be put into a position where he would have to overcome death. Meaning if you overcome it in the manner that you have an understanding of it, you'd have to succumb to it first. And for us, the idea that God would have to succumb to death in order to show us that he can overcome it um, is a violation from a creedal standpoint. Uh, because we believe that God is immortal. So whereas your path that you believe to salvation requires for an incarnation and for that to be a representation of an overcoming of death, we don't need to jump through that many um, hoops to see that type of a show. Rather, we just have the word of God telling us that for forgiveness can be granted to you. And I don't have to leave any type of state of my existence or my um, innate uh, attributes in order to accomplish giving something to you who is a creation of mine. Do you understand what I'm saying? So wow. while I value what you're really trying to do, which is to find these commonalities, I think you're still suffering from that fundamental mistake of thinking that what you have right now as an explanation for belief and as an explanation for salvation is going to be bridged from the Quran in any way because of its explicit stances on certain things. Um, there's no room for argument or negotiation, period. There's no room for negotiation on whether or not God, God dies or doesn't in the Quran. There is no room for negotiation on whether or not Isa was God incarnate or not. There's just no room for negotiation. That's the issue. And you're, you're trying to build these bridges. But at the end of you approaching it from a biblical stance, you can start from a biblical stance. But the second that you approach the Quranic position from the bridge beginning from the biblical stance of the incarnation or the death and the resurrection and stuff like that, there's just nothing there for you from the Quranic side because it's as clear as day that it's a non-negotiable fact. And I, I'm wondering why you're having such a hang up with that. Um, I, I, I think you're genuinely like after truth, but I think that your mechanisms on trying to get there is like, I don't know, man, for lack of a better word, I think you're just kind of shooting yourself in the foot every time for no reason. And you shouldn't do that. You really shouldn't. Well, I, so I appreciate, I, I, I trust me, I, I do genuinely appreciate this form of conversation. Um, sure. And I, and I, I hope you believe me that I'm, yes, discussions in the past can get heated and so on, but uh i am personally um i suppose you could say exhausted uh of uh the 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 here and there chasing around of certain verses back and forth between christian muslim dialogues uh, don't do it then, man don't do it you're you're you take that upon yourself and again this is just from what i'm seeing right like when I told you, just read the Quran, I didn't say read the Quran and then read the tafsir and then read the commentaries by both Shia and Sunni and then try to b b build this. B Don't do that. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But let, let me, let, <laughs> just read let the me Quran. clarify to you one thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've, I've been seeing uh, other people engage Muslim, like in this case, Christians or even non-Christians who are also maybe atheists or something. And as always, your go-to verses back and forth on both sides. Now, in the last, say, about three months-ish, thereabouts, I decided, in fact, actually, it was kind of like the start of this year, really. I decided to go, okay, I have the time now, uh, apart from all the biblical research and other scientific, my private life and sciences, 
I, I have now the time to let's just do the Christian thing, ironically enough, if I'm a Christian and it, it is mandated in the Bible to, uh, you know, to, to pursue the truth of things. So let, and to also have a clear conscience, let's just go through this thing called the Quran. And so therefore I can come back in this case, so far I'm, I'm up, I've just finished chapter eight and I can come to you and say, Hey, based on what I've read so far, these are my, my leanings. Um, but make them yours, bro. Make them your own. Don't make them the commentaries of other people. That's that's what no, I'm no, I'm not. I, I trust me. I I know. All right. I know the difference between here's a text versus a secondary. What's called secondary literature, like commentaries and all that. Because I do the same with the Bible. Like I I'm always having to engage critics of the Bible, um, and, uh, clarifying to them that. Yeah, what you're referring to is commentary and possibilities, and then here's the primary text. Now, the funny thing is, is that I do, as a religious person, I do approach the Bible as a human text. So there okay. is that presupposition built in. Okay. And that's there's nothing wrong with it theologically in the Christian worldview. Therefore, I'm expecting the text to engage with, you know, in the moment circumstances. So I was I was interested to see like Surah eight actually engages with a certain battle. I mean that's what the Tafsirs point out. Now it, interestingly, Kashani says he doesn't even approach it in that historical context with Muhammad and, and that battle. Rather, he just sees it again holistically, um, and and based on what I've seen so far in the Quran from two to eight, is this constant engagement with jews christians jews christians mm -hmm. and based on say gabriel reynolds work where he has um uh an extensive amount of citations with common era texts of between the second century AD all mm -hmm. the way to muhammad he does point out for example one th another thing that fascinated me is in surah 3 when it yeah. speaks about mary um being fed by Allah and mm -hmm. Mary uh, there's this casting of lots with respect to who's going to uh, look after Mary when Zachariah approaches her now that is in the proto evangelion of James where it says that they they casted pens a lot and it landed on Joseph and she being before the age of 12 she was a, a virgin in the temple, and when she reached the age of Mensis, basically, then she's impure to be a virgin in the temple. And then that story also says that Zachariah was wondering how she was fed, like, with you know, like basically, why wasn't she hungry all the time? And then she kept saying, "Oh, the angel of the Lord kept feeding me." And so it's it's interesting that the that from what I've been reading so far with a careful eye, things I've never known before. In the last time we spoke, I didn't know about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And immediately I'm going, okay, I'm trying to let go. I'm trying to push aside the bias or the hypothesis I raised, say, back on, say, Muslim Lantern's channel. Like, like all the biblical characters, if I align them to, you know, both ways, Quran, Bible, the Quran's version from Adam down seems to be its own thing, not connected to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And someone like Gabriel Reynolds is, is then bridging the two going, oh, by the way, there's an intermediate text tradition so the bible's here apocryphal stuff is here and then the, and then the quran is here so right so that's why why like, are you doing that though like the, again see like even when we're just having this discussion you're you're still trying to do the same things that i try to you know kind of tell you not to do right so why and and here's the thing man um you know, you've been at this a long time and your knowledge of apocryphal texts and uh, your knowledge of the biblical stories and stuff like that is is really good, right? Really, really good. And I think that, you know, subhanAllah, bro, but like even in the first few, in the in the verses of the chapter that I read, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you just keep veering in the wrong direction and you're persistently disobedient, 
that you're you are just he's sealing your heart man and i it's not to try to get on an emotional level with you because i really appreciate the logic that you bring to the table but the very thing that you're doing is exactly what the quran says that you're going to be doing and the very result that you're getting is exactly the result that the quran says that you're getting and i'm i'm wondering why don't you take it from an absolute basic standpoint of the oneness of god okay the islamic understanding then the biblical understanding separate from one another and which one makes more sense then take it to the next step and say the delivery of the message take the quranic understanding to, and then take the biblical understanding then take the next step the path to accountability and the salvation and then each at each phase just ask yourself which one makes more sense which one is more reasonable right because remember god is not going to give you something that is in any way shape or form questionable when it comes to the fundamentals of what gets you to the good place what gets you to earn his pleasure he's not going to make things confusing he's going to make things simple generalizable practical applicable to the whole like all these things right and what i'm seeing that you're doing is like here's an example you had mentioned gabe right and his knowledge of the Apocrypha and trying to build these bridges. But what gives him the authority to comment on the Quran? Nothing. He doesn't have knowledge in classical Arabic. He didn't study under Islamic scholarship. He probably doesn't know the Quran by heart. He probably hasn't even read it in Arabic. He doesn't understand the nuances. So now what people are trying to do, and you know, may God guide him, bro, is he's trying to say, okay, look, I believe in something, but I'm not certain on my belief. But I believe that something else is out there, which is the truth. And I'm trying to take my best approach to get to that truth. And I'm trying to take the knowledge that I know and the knowledge that's available to me out there. And I'm trying to bridge the gap. And that's exactly what I'm seeing you doing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say that is the path to get to him. All he says is, read the book, approach it with sincerity, be honest with yourself and use your reason and come to the conclusion yourself. This Quran does not say go and talk to Gabe on what Gabe says and about the bridges and what's similar between what war and what not. We would all be really, really screwed if we had to do that. What the Quran is telling you to do is sit by yourself read me personally reflect on me and the message that's in here if it makes sense then authenticate the messenger if the messenger is authenticated then you have no choice but to submit la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah that's the attestation you can't believe in the quran if you don't believe in the messenger you don't need gabe or any of these Shia scholars or Ibn Taymiyyah, and uh, you know, I know Ibn Taymiyyah is not a Shia scholar, but you don't need Ibn Taymiyyah, you don't need Ibn Kathir, you don't need any of these guys, dude. You don't. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell you go check Ibn Kathir and see what Ibn Kathir says about Mary and how she was fed. And, no, you don't. Yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, yeah, Morris, I'm not, I know that. I, I do the same with the Bible. Uh, right. But trust, trust me that, that that again when I said when I look at the Bible and I see the biblical books connected to what's happening relevant to the contemporary situation, like Ezekiel, for example, says in so and so year, or in this month, this king <clears throat> said this, or this situation, this pharaoh, whatever. It's it's the texts are working within the uh sits and laban is the, the german like the 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 context the oikumene the the, the situation i got you author, but right? you're using the situation to vet the validity of the text and i'm telling you don't do that i'm telling but you what? that when you pick up the bible you should be able to read the bible without having to go and check the situation to to verify the validity of the text bro 
Uh, remember, uh, and, well, no, I, I disagree, and here's why because there are Christians who do a disservice to themselves by doing that. So, for example, in Sunday school, there are pastors, I kid mm -hmm. you not, that I've, ha I've been frustrated with that will say, uh, it's a mystery. I don't know what the wheels in Ezekiel means. Right. But then you have the background scholarship that will say, oh, it's the Zodiac in Babylon. It, it's right. it's polemics that Ezekiel uses with iconogra iconographic stuff. Can't I see... Now, obviously, you're coming from the view that the Quran is from Allah, right? Mm -hmm. and, and yes, I find it interesting that there's no... It, it doesn't read like a history book. Uh, it, it, Not it, a history it is, book. <laughs> it, it does have that flavor of what you call a sign, right? Each, each, it's like the, it's, I, I, I hate, a, I hate a bridge like this, but it's kind of like the book of Proverbs, where it's just right. statements rather than just a flow from one thing to the next. And there's a lot of reminders like, oh, by the way, remember when XYZ happened and then Allah did this and that. So I'm, I am noticing that's the, um, that's the momentum of the book. Right. I will say this, dude. So, you see how you said that you're disappointed with the uh, priests and the you know that you when you go and you talk to them and they're Not just all, like but, some. but I understand what you're saying generally, right? Uh, I'm saying that you should be following a message that doesn't even require you to go to a priest. Okay, the Quran doesn't say go to your local imam and talk to him about this particular thing. The Quran is giving you the clear answer directly to you without any intermediary. And I, what I'm suggesting to you is that if you're sincere, which is the requirement, that you would look at the Bible and say, man, how on earth is this supposed to be widely applicable to the whole of people? Because I've had to go through extensive research because I'm not satisfied the results that the book is telling me. So I have to go to the to the priest. Then I'm not satisfied with the priest. Then I have to go to the academic. And then the academic explained it to me. But the thing that the academic explained has no bearing on what's creedal. Rather, it was just a detail about a particular item, like the zodiac sign. So for example... Even the academic right now, which you're depending on for the zodiac sign, is not going to tell you how or why or what or conclusively that they are convinced of a trinity. Rather, they're going to say it's a mystery and it's up, it's, it, it boils down to faith. And what I'm trying to tell you is that if you were to read the Quran, which you are, and you would just reflect on it sincerely, which you are, hopefully, right? That you would not need an academic. You would not need that priest because you would not come up to a, a, a concept that would result to being a mystery. So apart from yeah. the things that, and, I, and I'm talking like a creedal core concept, bro. And the reason why I think it's so heavy on you, dude, uh, wallahi, I really believe this. Like in my heart of hearts, I believe this because you know this is the truth. It's heavy on you because you see it for face value. And now because of all the knowledge that you have built up, that is your ego working against you and saying, look, man, you've done all this research. You cannot abandon it so simply. When on the other side, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is even telling you, I mean, I read it in the first chapter. If you think you're smart in comparison to me, you're a fool. Meaning if you think that you're smart in comparison to God, you're a fool. God is not going to put you in an impossible situation with an impossible task, with an impossible test, and then, ex and then punish you for not being able to complete it. And especially someone like you who is knowledgeable, who has a platform, who has a following, who's built all these things, brother, this is your test. It's as simple as that. And I know that my response might sound petty, but I'm being real with you, man. I'm being real with you. If you're trying I, to... I, please, I know, I know you're being genuine and real. Let, me just, let me just finish with this. And I'll, and I'll, yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out. If you're trying to appease to your intellect, to your following... To your to this to that to your ego 
brother, the the content that I read today literally says you're sacrificing it for a miserly gain in this world, dude. It's just, it's as clear as day. Anybody that's stuck around, any of the viewership that's stuck around or rewatched this video, you'll see. Just read the first chapter, man. Read the first 20 verses. It's plain as day. I want the best for you. I got no skin in the game, dude. I'm not telling you take your Shahada right now, though I would love for you to embrace Islam because it's the truth. But you just got to get over it, dude. You got to get up. You're there. You see it for what you see it, man. Polish your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So <laughs> I want you to trust me when I say this. But at the same time, I don't, I'm not You're asking right, you to man. trust me believe what i'm saying it blindly obviously i'm uh it, it there's there's no i'm not stressed how you take this take it for what it is all right i hear what you're saying what you're saying is you can fall into traps of having blind spots you can fall into a trap of maybe like an echo chamber uh i see this in cults all the time uh i know the cult like thinking i'm trained in the scientific discourse in my own like educational context. So I know what peer review is like. I know what what um, what that entails, right? Uh, now, what you're saying is that kind of like what the Catholics do, they have that middleman, so to speak, which ironically is a human who himself being finite sinner, most likely prone to, to error. And then people without any form of critical thinking don't realize that it's 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 basically the you know when jesus says the blind leading the blind it, it, it can fall into that but so i'm Rob, aware of that. i didn't speak on my behalf i literally just told you what a lost panel that i said i didn't say anything on my i didn't say anything on my own dude you're arguing the quran right now dude no 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 when you're telling me about how i how i approach the quran that i approach it through secondary means without going directly to the Quran. No, I said it's you like go to the Quran. I said you go to the Quran, but what you're not doing is you're not personally reflecting on it. You're you you reflect, right. but your yeah, conclusion yeah, so me, is not personal. Right. You reflect and right. have three other guys and then you're making an opinion off of everything. Don't do that. Yeah, but that but that's what I'm getting at. I'm not doing that. Okay. I'm not doing okay. that. Cool. I trust you. I I'm reading the Quran, but I'm also reading all Obviously, there's a variance of translations, but I'm I'm sticking with I can count on one hand major well-known translations, okay. and I find and that's why, for example, the baptism, the, the coloring verse, is just an example of how there's a variation of translation. That's not but a translation. Is, what that guy wrote was not Quran, bro. That wasn't a translation of Quran. You're looking at an exegesis of his opinion. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about the tafsir. I'm talking about like Saki International will say religion, or that this is the way, or Yusuf Ali will say um, the baptism. Uh, then other translations will say color, or some translations will what, say dipping. Yusuf Ali says baptism. Yes. If sorry, I go... I, I'm gonna look it up. I'm sorry. It's just it's because it's a Christian term, so I don't see how it could fit. You know what I'm saying? Especially yeah, when go, it's go, about go to Yusuf Ali's translation. He says the baptism of Allah. Okay. Sahi in International says religion. Pictal says color. And what was it? 138? Yep. Okay. Let me see what the Arabic term is. Okay. So, fair. It's fine. If it says baptism, that's fine. Now, we're going to have to go with what's the best one, right? Meaning the closest I, that's to the not my concern, the by the way. I'm not concerned. Huh? By the way, that's not my concern. I'm not 
Okay, so uh, I mean, carry on, carry on with your point. Even, even so, right? The, it's it. I I just want you to understand. Even if it says baptism, right? It's not talking about a Christian baptism. Yeah, no, I I okay. know that. I know. Cool, that. cool, cool. Okay, so carry on then. Carry on. I'm, carry I'm, on. That's so. This is because notice, as a Christian, don't forget the Quran itself, especially in chapter four. Mm -hmm. It says. Go like like you know the challenges, whether you're Jew or Christian, you should be by default, like it should be very easy for you to convert to 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 Islam, because of the the trajectory where this is going. In other words, Christianity is not uh, the uh, the finish line. It's Muhammad. Muhammad's the finish line, and Islam is the finish line. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, great. That is. A very like audacious. I don't mean that in a negative way or, or to criticize, no, no, it, but that fine. is a fine. that is a uh, that's one heck of a claim. Okay, so that means Muhammad and Islam and, and the Quran are on the hot seat. Now there are obviously those who have a, an agenda and an axe to grind and so on. I'm trying not to fall into that category. So I'm, I'm reading the Quran. And yes, in fact, I want to see what, I mean, each ayah is supposed to be a sign, right? So I want to see if there's a so-called warming of the heart. I want to see theologically what is wise or interesting or beautiful um, in the chapters I've read so far. Mm -hmm. And I'll be I'll be very blunt with you and straight with you. I haven't found anything of relevance or of any form of beauty mm -hmm. so far in these chapters. Like I could find it maybe in chapter nine or ten and so on. But so far in the eight chapters I've read so far, all I've read is a lot of fear mongering and criticism against Jews and Christians and what they believe. But at the same time plagiarism from apocryphal Gnostic texts. Now, since you, I'll just give you a quick example because you're reading from chapter two. Did you read to your, like, I, I don't know if you did this two hours ago, but did you read from the very first verse of chapter two? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when I come across something like, say, verse 65 in chapter two. Okay. Do, now, now, again, I, when I look at that, I think to myself, Okay, is this meant to give a sense of humor? Is this meant to give a sense of, like, how do I reflect on this theologically? Um, and, and and so that's that's question number one. And question number two is, did this actually happen in history? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because so I mean, what what does what, I mean, what, what does sixty five say? Just, just so we can give, use this as an example. Let's so let's take it step by step. First off, yep. you said that you've read all the way up to chapter eight, and you have not, you've not seen. A Unless single... you can show me an example that's beautiful, I'm open. Okay. I'm open for that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to but chapter using, one. Since you're in chapter two, I'm using this as an example where I think to myself, this is meant to be the eternal word of Allah, mm -hmm. and this verse is one of many I can show so far in the eight chapters. No that problem. Really make, that really make me, no makes problem. me scratch my head. No problem. Okay. So let's take it step by step, right? So, and, and you have a tendency of doing this, bro. You have a tendency of trying to go on this, like, escapade of, and again, and this is the beauty of the Quran. You're not approaching it with a sincere heart, so it's it's causing problems for you. If, if. Mura Stone. Uh, okay, but in, I'm, I'm in the context of the discussion, up. don't, uh, no, don't okay, assume no problem, that no I'm problem. not coming at this with a sincere heart. No I am. Okay, I will assume that you're coming at it with, with a sincere heart. Right. Now, you tell me from chapter one, is there anything beautiful in this chapter? Uh, well, I like, so so I like specifically show us a straight way. Okay, okay. So, 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 so now, we are... you take back what you said. No, 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 no. So what I'm saying is I don't find anything in, in a broad brush sense that's applicable. But what I do like, what I do find interesting and beautiful, like the baptism verse and then over here show us a straight way. Mm -hmm. I can track back as a Christian and go, but that's exactly why I'm a theist and a Christian to begin with. 
So okay. when it says show us a straight way, what what then deflates that 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 sudden enthusiasm? Like, oh, okay, now now we're going somewhere. Now well, the Quran on, sounds bro. really hold cool. Hold on, hold on. The very next verse goes into judgment of the Jews and Christians. Hold on, dude. Hold on. We're gonna take it step by step. So the right. first thing is we're talking about the beauty. Okay, now the Quran is in Arabic. Okay, the meaning of the Quran is what you're reading. Now, when I see something like, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most merciful, okay, to me, that's a beautiful statement. It's a beautiful way to approach your creator, okay? Then it says, all praises for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Now, uh, in this, in um, this very word, okay, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al Alameen. This is addressing both generations forward and backward, time forward and backward. It's also addressing uh, all worlds. Okay? All worlds, yep. meaning the seen and the unseen. Okay? Just that mm -hmm. one word. Alameen. It has never existed in the Arab literature before the revelation of the Quran. Period. Period. Okay. So if you are not a class, if you are not classically trained in Arabic, you would just see this as the worlds or the universe. Okay. But to the native speaker, mm -hmm. because remember, you have to understand the scripture as to how it's coming and these golden nuggets to the to the people that it, that um, understand the native tongue. And then now the translations are going to try to extract the essence of what's being said. The point gets put across by just translating it to Lord of all the worlds. But it's very difficult to extract the essence of the word Alamin as an example. Now, if, in case if you were reading this, now that I told you the depth of just this one word, do you find that at all beautiful? I, I, I find it beautiful, but I, I'm, I don't find it unique to the Quran. Okay. I already have, in other words, don't forget, I already have free knowledge. So I already have got concepts you. like alpha and omega, first and last. Right, got you. Uh, Hebrews 11 says... Basically, got Jesus you. is the one who created the aeons, the ages, got you, got you. right? Got you. So I already okay. have that going in my mind. Yep. Right. Now, here's what I find profound. I want you to find me an example of anywhere else in any piece of literature, in any language where all of that is said in one word other than the Quran. Uh, I can find it in Ugaritic literature associated with El and Baal. Like the what's okay, called the Baal. In song. one word. What so do you mean? In, in, so Al Alamin, basically. That, that statement. Al Alamin, yes. It's going to meaning. And the meaning must equate to time back and forth, generations back and forth, and both seen and the unseen world. In one word. Uh, the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, commentates Man. all of those in, in one, in one. No, it doesn't. No, yeah, it doesn't. It does. because, uh, no, it doesn't. Because you don't even know how to pr pronounce that. You don't even know if that's the correct, correct pronunciation. Mm, no, no, no. It, it, linguistically, the word Yahweh, or some pronounce it as Yahweh, Y-I-H, is because right. it's, well, I'll allow me to explain, I'll explain. Man. I love I'll you, explain, dude, but dude. you're not being fair, man. You know, you know that it's sacrilege if you were to go in front of a Jew and say that word, they would tell you don't say that word because they themselves don't know how to pronounce it. Now you can't tell me you know how to pronounce it. No, no, no. It's nothing to do with pronunciation. It's to do with the with the consonants and yeah. how the, the in Exodus three fourteen when Moses says, "What's the name?" You know, what's your name? And I'd go to the Israelites because that's a very Egyptian way of discussion. Like all the Egyptian gods say, I am X, Y, Z, and they're constrained to whatever function that they associate with. Yahweh tells 
Moses. Well, this is my name. I am. I am. It's Ekia. Ekia. Bob, you're you're what you're and doing then, is and then, uh, no, you're but not, but you're not but, hearing me out, man. I'm, sorry. I'm hearing you out. I'm, I'm hearing you out, you out but, without a reason. I'm giving it because like, there's a reason. You you are saying Yahweh, but the word Yahweh may not be pronounced as Yahweh. It could be pronounced as Yahweh. You don't know. Okay. No, you don't no, know. No, no, more no, consonants, no. man. No. Yeah. Come on, the, dude. You're not you're not a Hebrew, Hebrew speaker. Ones. Even the native Hebrew speaking people, including the, the rabbis of the top of the top, do not pronounce it. No, I'm talking about lexical analysis of why it's the consonants are written like that i understand and i'm telling you that you don't need to be doing that i'm telling you that you need to give me a word that specifically means specifically means generational all worlds and forward and backward in time specifically and then what you did is you gave me the personal name of god yes so you have you have single terms like Yahweh is one, then El Gabor is another one, El Shaddai is another one. These okay. are all Semitic bro, terms that, that try and communicate How in love and equate to population. generation. How does Yahweh equate to generations? I'm talking genealogy, genealogical generations. Right. So, for example, in Exodus 33, when Moses says, Show me your kavod, your glory. And Yahweh says, ah, you can't see me and live. But as I pass by you, I'll place basically his, like a, like a, to use like an Arabic term, like a hijab, like a veil okay. to, to, to protect him. And then you will see my, and then translations usually say, say something like back. You'll see my back. How many words was but that? The right word right? there is literally, you'll see your past and your future and because it's all connected to yahweh he's the one that shows the big picture but rob you're doing the thing again you're giving an explanation as to why it fits but you're not giving me the actual word that means all of this i'm telling you this one word means all of that give me one word that means all of the things that you said give yeah me so, one word that so means i'm, everything I'm you just pointing said. out yeah i'm pointing out that the word Yahweh linguistically or etymologically, not phonetically, I'm not saying phonetics here or how to pronounce it. I'm saying I got you. the etymological definition of the word fits exactly that word. Okay. And I'm trying to tell So now what you're telling me is if I were to substitute that word Yahweh anywhere else, it'll mean exactly that and the sentence will work? Yes. Really? Because as a Christian, when it says all praise is for Allah, because Allah is not a name. Allah is just the word, the God, right? No, Allah is a name. Allah is a well, name. Allah bro. is an actual name. Allah is this name, yes. But what does it translate to literally in, in it English? It doesn't matter what it translates. It, it translates to the only deity worthy of worship. But you're missing the point. It's also a personalized name. It's a very unique word. Ah, now, but, but notice, Jews and Christians don't do that to the deity they worship. Yahweh is a nameless word. There's, it's not a name. It's to describe that he's Lord of all the worlds. That's what the word Yahweh means. Rob, I'm sorry, man, but you're you're still missing the point, dude. You're, 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 I didn't compare the word Allah to Yahweh. I compared the word Al-Alamin to mean multiple I know meanings. you didn't compare Allah to Yahweh. I'm saying, okay, as a so Christian, don't I can do say, that, dude. all Just praises don't for Allah. Let me bring it back to you. Let me bring, I'm going to, I'm going to bring back. I'm sorry, dude. You're not going to win me on that one. You're not going to tell me that Yahweh is a representation of back forth and generations, including genealogies of human beings. Yahweh does not represent genealogies of human beings, period, period, dude. That's like, there's no yeah. way you could walk into anywhere, any Jewish speaking place, uh, any synagogue and be like, yeah, Yahweh represents the genealogy of human beings. Dude, they would kick you in the butt, man. Come on, be real. Be real, dude. No, 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 no. I, I, I actually challenge you. Go and ask a Jew. What does Yahweh connotate in in regards to the just existence in itself, which encompasses all sorts of, I mean, as an, like for example, in science, evolution. Me. Yahweh is the reason for evolution. For example, anything in this world, Yahweh is the reason for. Rob, I'm, I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that the origin and the source of everything is Yahweh, but you're, you're, you are, I am telling you the literal definition of this word. And you are now saying that it's going, 
I think we're beating a dead horse in here, man. You're not going to convince me. So I'll just All right, go, go, go to the next. I'm sorry, dude. So now it says it, this whole chapter from one to seven, mm -hmm. is that not beautiful to you at all in the slightest? Uh, no, because it's not unique to the Quran. It's beautiful as a Christian, but okay. it's not winning me over to Islam. Okay, it's not supposed to win you over to Islam, bro. It's supposed to give you a nugget. You remember this? Yeah, that's you're, you're not just gonna read Surah Al Fatiha and go, Oh man, I'm a Muslim. Especially, I'm talking about you personally. There's other people that'll read it and they go, Wow, there's no way that, th that this is beautiful and I, I, I'm, I accept. Okay, but I'm talking about you personally. There's no way that okay, you so me personally, are gonna read this. Okay, so what, okay. what undoes it for me? All right, what undoes it for me is the very last verse. So the shows a straight way is a very Christian term because before Christians were called Christians, they were called the way, the straight way. Okay. Are you part of the straight way? Literally what, what early Christians used to ask other people. Then the very next verse just undoes the, the whole chapter. It's basically saying Allah's wrath against, and it's sort of mysterious because the Tafsirs then bring out the where oh, is, it's wrath against what Jews. You're talking about seven is the end. Are you talking so about verse here? six is just a straight way? Verse seven, seven is okay. right. So verse seven is um, the path of those whom you are blessed, which is okay. obviously Muslims, uh, such as have not incurred your wrath nor are astray. That's one particular translation. Another okay. translation is uh, uh, the path of those a path of those whom you are blessed, not the path of those on whom your anger falls, nor of those who go astray. Okay, what's the problem, Rob? What's okay, so so who's identified in regards to his wrath and those who go astray according to classical tradition? No, you don't need according to classical tradition. Just read the Quran, bro. He tells you. Why do you need classical tradition? This is because what I'm this is the because, problem. Because think about it. Because think about it. If I don't have that and I'm just reading it, then I'm thinking to myself. Well, who is, I'm asking the question, it's a natural question, who is his anger against and who right. did go astray? Great. So read the Quran. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You're not reading the Quran, dude. Okay. And then when you go into chapters two all the way to eight, uh -huh. specifically more so in seven, you you get inklings of this, specifically, chap, in fact, chapter five. So 265 and no. five or 60 actually give you the intertextual uh, answer for who Allah's anger is against. Okay. Look. So if you go to 265. I don't, have, I don't have to go that far, brother. I don't have to go that far. 2-2. Two, two. This is the book. There is no doubt about it. A guide for those that are right. mindful of the law. Okay. Great. Okay. Here's 2-4. Okay. Here's 2-4. Now, what does 2-5 say? 2-4 and 2-5. And who believe what has been revealed to you, O prophet, and what was revealed before you, and have sure faith in the hereafter. It is they who are truly guided by their Lord. 2.6. As for those who persist in disbelief, it is the same whether you warn them or not. They will never believe. So here's, a, here's, a, here's your first clue. Your first clue is that you are disbelieving in the prophet. That's your first clue, dude. You don't have to go two fifth twenty five two seven. What the heck, man? Just go to the. No, no, why? No, no, why are no, you doing no, that? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not jumping ahead and and like I'm I I was and still am systematically going okay. verse by verse. Okay, now, great. So by the we time you reach chapter eight, wait, hear, hear me out. By the time you reach chapter eight, I already have, uh, like a domino sort of build up of of things and in where you interconnect because the Quran is meant to be its own voice, right? Mm -hmm. So notice how chapter two starts. It starts with the mysterious letters, uh, Aleph, Lam, Mim. Okay. Right. Now that in itself is a big question mark. What does no, that mean? It's not. it's not. There's things about, there's certain things that you're not going to have an answer to. There you go. Why? Because, because God is not giving you the answer to it. It's not but, because it's not fundamental. This is, meant to be, this is meant to be a book that's meant to com, com, communicate to me. Rob, it is communicating me, with right? you. What is the re why do you need to know what Elif Lam Mim means? Why should that if it's if it's nonsensical or we shouldn't know what it's, it means? It's why not is that nonsensical, anyway? Rob? It's not that it's nonsensical. It serves a purpose, but the purpose what? is 
We don't know. And that's and and and, and but why is it that? Because God chose to put it there. If God told you to stand on one foot for five minutes every day, otherwise you're going to hellfire, but, would you do it? But just no, quickly, for real, though, Rob. This is no offense to you. It's no offense. Notice, to you. notice, notice the it's it the answer you just gave me is like a sort of a brainwashing answer. It's like it's not well, a brainwashing God said, answer. God did it and put it that it's that's not, a presuppositional argument. Here, here's what's Rob, you're doing that thing again, man. First off. This is the the issue is is that you don't believe that this book is from God, and you believe that the Bible is from God. Why is it in the Bible? And I'm not I don't want to go about the what aboutism because I, I really don't like taking it down that route. But I can find many things in the Bible where I can say why is this in here? This serves no purpose whatsoever. And you're yeah. going to tell me it's because it's from God. No. Okay, so you're going to tell me that God just said a bunch of useless stuff. No. Okay, what, did so I, how did I, what, what did I say how I view the Bible? Well, your viewpoint is heretical. You said that you view it as a as a human text. Right. And that's that heretical. providentially put together, and that's what it means. And I'm not, by the way, it's not a heretical view. That is the classical sola scripture review, and a lot of evangelicals hold to this. Rob. Your you're... view is that this is directly from God himself. Yes. So all yes. the more for me the intrigue that, oh, wow, I'm actually going to be yes. reading the very words of Allah? Yes. Okay, yes. now go to 65 and clarify to me the logic of 65 in this I, chapter. I, I'm, I'm going to clarify the logic yeah, after I get done with this point. The, okay. You do not need to know every single thing in the Quran for it to be the word of God. You need to get over that hump, dude. But that's a subjective statement. Don't no, you see not. what the answer you just because... gave me is subjective. It's not an objective no, statement. No, it's not. It's not subjective, dude. It's not subjective. And here's the reason why. Because you, at the whether or not you know the meaning of Elif Lam Mim you, you, does not have a bearing on this book being from God or not. It doesn't. You can still come to the conclusion whether or not this is from Allah subhanahu wa or not with or without the knowing of Elif Lam Mim, period. It's not subjective. It's the truth. So, truth. so you, so, okay. So if the Quran comes from Allah, right, uh -huh. directly from Allah, yeah. for whatever reason, <laughs> if Allah flips in mysterious on, that only Allah knows mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Why? We don't ask why God does what he does, Rob. We, so you just we, accept. We, it's just we, pure acceptance. It's not just pure acceptance. First, you have to the, come to the rational conclusion that this is, in fact, from God. If you came to the rational conclusion that this is from God, if you came to the rational conclusion that Prophet Muhammad is indeed a messenger of God, then you don't question why. You don't question why God did something after you came to the rational conclusion and the logical conclusion that this is, in fact, from God. That's why I gave you the example that if I told you that I'm a messenger of God, and that I received revelation, and there's a book of potato, and my book of potato actually says that you have to stand on one foot for five minutes every single day. Otherwise, you're going to be punished for eternity. And in fact, it was true. And in fact, I was, I was a messenger from God. Okay. Then you would have to adhere to it. You'd have to stand on one foot for five minutes. You wouldn't stand on it or you wouldn't not stand out and go, well, why do I have to do that? And that's what you're doing right now. You're literally saying, well, I don't really believe that this is from God. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Then you're trying to come through my paradigm and say, okay, you believe it's from God. Then you're trying to ask me, why haven't I questioned why is this still in, in here? or What purpose does this serve? And I'm trying to tell you from my paradigm, after using my reasoning faculties, after using my logical faculties to come to the conclusion that Muhammad is the messenger, and that this is indeed from God, I don't question why. I don't have the authority to question why, Rob. I don't. No one does. Not even the messenger did. Messenger didn't receive a revelation and just go, why are you giving me this? Did I, did I break up? Is there a breaking up? I don't know. Maybe I there's a slight delay. I mean, you're back now. I can hear you. Hello? Hello, hello. Can you hear me or no? 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, there's a I, I heard what I heard. Suddenly everything froze, but I but your voice is still talking. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. And I think that's what I'm saying. Your approach is not ideal. I actually I don't think it's sound at all. I'm trying to tell you that the bearing of Elif Lam meme, why God said what he said in his revelation, it doesn't matter what he said. It doesn't matter if he said the the 265, it doesn't matter. If he and, and and again, if you rewatch the video, I mean, I'm gonna chunk this video up so it's palpable because we're hitting four hours, and I gotta go, dude. I really do. It's midnight, but it, it it's one of those things where when you're looking at it, you're looking at it, you're looking at the, the, the 265, and if you were to say, hey, did this historically happen or did it, was it metaphorical? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have a bearing on the creed. The creed doesn't say that your path to heaven is finding out whether or not people were transmuted to monkeys or not. That's not what this is saying, Rob. Well, it's, not it's, a, it's, it's a historical claim that once upon a time, and but don't forget, I have a revelatory claim. It's not wait, a historical wait, wait, claim. Wait, 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 for the sake of time, I just want to explain no to problem, you as well no Go ahead. that Go ahead. when I read, uh, uh, what's called the legends of the jews which was just a compilation in the 1800s of mm -hmm. talmudic stuff and all that you mm -hmm. have in jewish tradition but in most of rabbinic tradition not jewish christian tradition post-christian jewish tradition mm -hmm. that um there's a certain person who uh broke the sabbath because don't forget the quran when it mentions mentions the, the situation of monkeys and so on it's to do with sabbath the Sabbath context. Okay. There was a person that picked up sticks and broke the Sabbath. Now, the Hebrew term there is not saying that the person became a monkey. It's saying stop monkeying around like what monkeys do with sticks. And then there's a Talmud uh, tradition that, that uh, went a bit too far afield. This is Gabriel Reynolds's point. In think and taking that literally, like, like that, that Yahweh literally made them into monkeys. Okay. And now that survives in the Quran, which makes me go, well, anthropologically, that's impossible. Humans can't become monkeys. That's like a de-evolution. Yeah, but Rob, God can do whatever he wants, man. He can turn a... Yeah, but in history, a... there's no example of this. Not even in the Torah do you have humans becoming monkeys. Now, now but just quickly, because you brought up the monkey thing, I just want to... Yeah, but... okay, I, I just want to say something about the Aleph Lamim thing in a moment. Sure. This is what Gabriel Reynolds says in regards to that. So he quotes the, the Tafsirs, and then he says something interesting about the philology of it. He says, many surahs of the Quran begin with Arabic letters in this way. Mm -hmm. Usually, but not always, there are three such letters. And, and by the way, when I read this out, it's, it's short, it's not lengthy. I want you to critique it, all right? Okay. From, like, listen to what it says, and then I want, I'm interested to hear your response. Uh, here's, you I'm going to tell you right off the bat. He doesn't have an authority to, to have an opinion on the Quran. No. And, and everybody unanimously agrees. We do not know what the letters are for. And okay, okay, wait. Not, they do not even speculate. The, bro. I'm, interested to, speculate. I'm interested to hear your reaction. Okay, no problem, but I'm just prefacing. He's, uh, he's a biologist. He works, he works with Arabic. He's a trained he's, he, he he's not versed in Muslim classical Arabic, dude. He's. I don't care what he works you with. You know who Gabriel Reynolds is? No, and I and, and I, I I have no interest in his opinion on the Quran. Then you can't I, you can't just assert that he doesn't have you know these credentials if you don't know who he is. Dude, he's trying to link the Bible to the Quran. Okay, then even, okay, he could be. A, let's just say he's an amateur. Yes, no the problem. Claim, let's hear what right? his commentary is. But I'm 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 prefacing right, it. Right, and I'm interested to hear your reaction. No problem. So he goes. We don't speculate on it. So I'm just I'm just prefacing that. All right. So he says, while there has been considerable speculation about what they might mean, Islamic tradition offers no definitive answer. Jalalain sums up the prevailing view, quote, God knows best what is meant by this. These letters are, are one of the miracles of the Quran, and none but Allah alone knows their meanings. And then um, he then says, The groundbreaking philologist Christoph Lexenberg has extensively examined the Quran's Aramaic substratum. So there's like an Aramaic, you know, Syriac Aramaic context of that 
of that locale when Muhammad was growing up. And notes that the Psalms are mentioned several times in the Quran, like in chapter 3, Surah 17, Surah 21, Surah 35. He suggests that the mysterious letters may be vestiges of the Quran's source text having been a Christian lectionary. The Quranic scholar Erwin Graf declares that the Quran, according to the etymological meaning of the word, is originally and really a liturgical text designed for cultic recitation and also actually used in the private and public service. This suggests that the lit liturgy or the liturgical poetry and indeed the Christian lit liturgy, which comprises the Judaic liturgy, decisively stimulated and influenced Muhammad. And, Lex and his concluding sentence here is, Lexenberg explains that the Syriac Christian liturgy typically begins with a psalm and that up to three letters, just like this, Aleph Lamim, up to three letters can indicate the number of the psalm in question in the Psalter. So this, the Quran's mysterious letters then could be indications in the Syriac lectionary of which, of which psalm was to be recited. And when that Syriac lectionary was transmuted into the Quran, the letters, no longer intelligible, become or became mysterious utterances of Allah. Now that's a very normal, very natural, very probable. Okay, like when I look at that, I think myself, that makes sense. From Robert Spencer, right? That's from uh, uh, Gabriel Reynolds. Oh, I apologize. Okay, hold on. Gabriel Reynolds, R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S? N-O-L-D-S, yes. Gabriel Reynolds, yes. Okay. So, again, I'm just going to take a look at this gentleman because I don't know. I want to give him some credence. He has a whole YouTube channel where he no, brings I'm, on Muslim scholars. It, yeah. Okay. So, again, he's not a... I mean, just even looking at a, a base of his biography, dude, he's not he's not qualified to be talking about the Quran in any way. He has his studies, but they're not they're not in Quranic studies. They are it's just totally different, man. His field of study, world religions and world church. Okay. History of Christianity was his second field of study. So you're taking a Christian's point of view on what he thinks. Alif Lam Mim means, and yet when he reads of what the Mufassirun had wrote, clearly stating, clearly stating that we do not speculate, and the knowledge is with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. His, Why by the way, his dissertation was on Islam. Like I'll, 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 I don't know about the right person. No. Dissertation no. Oh, is he Notre Dame, for example? You're, please, dude, you're, I, it doesn't matter where Notre Dame, it doesn't matter Yale, it doesn't matter, bro. He is not trained in classical Arabic. Okay, I He's brought up a CV. Trained. Languages, classical Arabic, colloquial Arabic, Eastern, Syriac, Persian, Biblical Hebrew, Latin, New Testament, Greek, German, French, Italian. That's Great. his languages in, this, in a CV. Great. Now, now show me all the work that he's done on the Quran. Uh, well, he's got, let me see over here. Uh, publications, books, Allah, God and the Quran, Yale University Press, 2020. The Quran and the Bible, 2018 for um i'm reading the uh, same thing you're reading, man. I'm the reading quran the seminar reading. commentary the emergence of islam new perspectives on the quran the quran and its biblical subtext critique of christian origins the quran and its historical like these are it, this whole life's work is nothing but everything to do yeah, with islam and but the quran rob his his whole life's work is not under classical arab scholarship it's not under the field of quran it's just his opinion on him building a bridge between the bible and the quran that's what i'm trying to tell you man you need to stop doing that the mufessives who am i going to trust this guy or am i going to go trust ibn kathir on this well when i read <laughs> when i read a no, little bit of it no, because I, I what did he Look, he basically told you at the beginning, he told you in the commentary, he said, everybody classically agrees that this is with the knowledge of Allah and they don't speculate. That's literally what he told you. And then he said, with all that being said, and all due respect to those guys, here's what I think it is. Okay. So in, Come on, in, Rob. In, in, in closing, in closing, what I've seen in chapter two fits, like I'm being honest here. 
I get what I, I could change my mind when wrong. 9, 10, 11 onwards. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. I could change Go my ahead, mind man. in 9, 10, 11. But so far in chapter two, I see what I claimed before. The monkeys situation is a classic example of from the Talmud. Um, in chapter three, Mary with the, 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 the casting of lots was a very interesting one. And I have to wonder if the Quran is confusing the Miriam of Moses and Aaron. No, there's no confusion. The Jesus. There's no confusion. Don't even head down that way. We, you and I have already had a discussion on that. You're going to do yourself a disservice when you enter down that territory. Well, it's just, we're going to be has that, lot, that, that story of the Look, lots okay, and the angels but, feeding Mary no, and Allah again, feeding Mary. Rob, Rob, stop, man. That's an apocryphal are, story. You are taking the stories of the Bible and you are trying to attribute them to the Quran. And I've told you at the beginning of this conversation, and this is what gets you in trouble with other streamers, dude. This is what gets you in trouble with other people is because we keep telling you the same thing, but you're not growing from the advice that we're telling you. And this is what I told you. If you're sincere, isolate the Quran for what it is. Stop trying to build bridges between the Bible and the Quran. Stop trying I to build bridges. Not. I'm not. You, you are doing I'm, that very thing yeah, right now. I'm not, I'm not trying to build bridges. I'm trying to see the Quran is making a claim. Chapter four, specifically 157 says, to the Jews and the Christians, there's this test. Great. So look in the Torah. Look in the Injil. Yes. Okay. What else does the Quran say? About I don't the Torah? find so what far in the eight Quran? chapters. I don't find what is required in the Torah and the Injil. What? You don't even have the Injil, Rob. What else is the? There Quran you go. Have? If I don't have it, how could I make the test? Okay. Rob, and then, are you are you a Jew? No, obviously not. Okay. Why are you doing the test? Well, I well, I have the Injil, which is the New Testament, but you're saying no, that the Injil is not the Injil Rob? of the Quran. Rob, I'm sorry, man. You really lost a lot of respect with me right now, dude. You're telling me that you have the Injil after you and I have already discussed about this? You're still equating the Injil as the New Testament? No, I'm not. Rob, I'm please, just, don't just do this to yourself. You're saying. It's recorded. Don't do this to no, yourself, no man. I. Well, Lahi, like everybody gives you a chance. They, Look, they've gotten rid of you, man. And I don't want to do it out of the You started the discussion heart. well. Don't end it in a... I in don't a... want to, dude. I don't want to. And, 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 and God forbid, dude, I don't want to ruin my Ramadan. Well, Lahi, I don't, dude. But what you're doing is is it's not okay, Rob. It's not okay, dude. You you cannot say that the Injil is the New Testament. We've been I'm not saying road. that. Okay, you said you have the Injil, which is the New Testament. When I say that, what I mean is, as a Christian, I have the Injil as a Christian. This is my Injil, right? <laughs> I know <laughs> I know that the Quran, uh -huh. when the Quran speaks about the Injil, and as you understand the Injil, it's not the New Testament. I know that. I understand that. Okay, Rob, Therefore, what is the term Injil? Is it well, singular wait, or plural? Let me finish. Bro. Let me finish. So obviously I'm not thinking about, oh, uh, well, I'm going to just ignore that, and I have to force the, you know, my New Testament to fit with the Quran. No, I know that you can't you can't bridge the two. Okay. Okay, I'm past so that. When I the, want to know wait, what you're wait, 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 so when the Quran I gotta give you five minutes. Uh-huh. Okay, Quran the makes the Quran says in Geel and the Injil is an Arabic term and the Injil is the gospel given to Jesus. Why are you saying you yes have an because Injil? that is that in itself doesn't fit the New Testament because the fact that it says a book called the Injil is sent to Jesus yeah, the Christians don't understand it that way. For the Christians, the Injil is the actions of Jesus, what he finished and what his work. Whereas the Quran thinks it's a book that was sent to Jesus. No. Okay. No. So yes, that's no, what the Quran no. says. The book. There's I have to correct you on a lot of things, dude. Okay. So Jesus First didn't get off, an Injil. The Injil was the revelation given to Jesus. It was the revelation given to Jesus, just like the Torah was the revelation that was given. OK, now later, whether he inscribed it into a book or not, if the Quran labels it as Kitab al-Injil, then that means that not only was it revealed, but it was also inscribed in a book form. OK, so when you say that you consider your New Testament for you subjectively as your Injil, you are now talking about two different things because the Quran is referencing something that you don't have and you're referencing something that you you personally take as the Injil. And what I don't appreciate is you're taking that term and 
interchanging it with what you have and what the Quran is referencing. And this is exactly the point when the Quran says that they twist things. You're twisting things right now and you can't be doing that stuff, man. The Injil is the Injil. What you have is the New Testament Gospels, period. You can call it an Injil, but you're confusing everybody. You, you can't. You're not doing a service to people that are listening and trying to learn from this experience. Okay. It's not okay, man. So, so when don't... it says, when it says the, the gospel, the Angel, like in 546, we gave him Jesus or Isa, the gospel containing guidance and life. This, mm -hmm. and then we gave him the the Quran says the sent down language. We sent down right. the Torah. We sent down. The Torah. Yes, we sent it down. Yes. Right. Okay. So you're saying obviously I'm not I'm not saying that that is it's like a book just coming out of heaven like floating. Yeah, around. I understand. It's a revelation, dude. A revelation. Right. Given right. To him. Because that's what Quran is, you know, recitation. That's it's 100%. revelation. Right. Yes. So notice that everything you just said that didn't contradict what I was just saying. All I'm saying is that what how Christians understand in Geo. Step into the shoes of a Christian. I did. It's not the New Testament. It's the actions of Jesus. The Quran's view is the Injil is this thing, set, this this revelation or, or <laughs> teaching or guidance and you know like that is sent to Jesus to then give to the people. Okay. Okay. All right. So that in itself communicates to me that I can't use my New Testament that, as I have today. Correct. To judge Correct. what the Quran is saying, or to judge, say, the Isa of the Quran, or X, Y, Z. Correct, because All that right. chapter is talking specifically to That's what I've been people. trying to say for the last hour. <laughs> Rob, that's what I've been trying to tell you for the last hour, but so, you mix and well, match in terms. All right, but, but with all due respect, you do button, and I don't allow me to finish. The, the point is, so when I do read the Quran, and I'm and I'm seeing it challenge those who had this Injil that obviously is not the New Testament, or the Torah that's not the Torah that I have. And I don't have them, so I'm like, okay, then all I can do is read between the lines of what the Quran does say as act, like, you know, what actually happened in history. So like Mary with the casting the lots, and the Pharaoh drowning, and XYZ, like the date palm with Mary. Let me know when you're finished. I don't want to interrupt you. Like, like all of these, all of these, like the monkey thing, you know, Jews becoming monkeys, all of these um, assertions coming directly from Allah, they can't be erroneous. They can't be wrong because then, then the whole thing just breaks down. It, it shows it's a human work at the end of the day. It's not from Allah. Okay. Are you finished? And so in conclusion, when I'm looking at this, this is my concluding point. Okay. I'm not connecting the Bible to the Quran, okay. but interestingly, the Bible that I have don't have these stories. Okay, so that's I, I shut that shut that to the side now. Okay, I then look at anthropologically every example of some past tradition to see if they do have these stories. None okay. except, and this is my concluding point, none except the Common Era period, which then. When I see someone like Gabriel Reynolds making the same connections, I think to myself, yeah, but it's kind of weird because I'm not looking to make that statement. Rather, these are my musings as I was slowly learning about this. And now here's a scholar who, and plus that Aleph, Aleph Lamim, the, the mystery letters, all of this fits a very natural 5th, 6th, 7th century Syriac Christian mashup. In is that, Arabic your, is that your take on it? Is that your take? That's so far. That's what I'm seeing. That's that's okay. so far. That's so far. That's what I'm saying. With the okay, Quran. Rob. Nothing has changed from the first time that we spoke till today. Nothing. Seriously, nothing. And I'm, I'm being that, dead well, honest. Well, actually, you. actually, no. let me just say this. It's been years. So far, bro. The, the stuff years. I said before. Let me wait, wait, wait. Let me just clarify. So far, what I said before, I was saying it as a as a question mark hoping to be corrected or hoping to you know to be nuanced everything i've been doing so far confirms even more my hypothesis when we first spoke 
I am more grounded in the hypothesis I was raising to you than ever before based on this, this research. So, okay. and, and it's because I'm systematically going through the Quran, like reading it through. Okay. I respect it. That's, I, I can't say it any other way. Like that so far, but no problem, if, man. I, look, if dude, the Quran I, does I, change my perspective later on, I will be honest with you and I'll say, hey, Muris, this really challenged me. This is cool. Like this, you know, I, I will. Look, man, I, that up uh, it's, it's to be real with you, man. Um, like obviously, we're not going to come to a conclusion tonight, right? So it's uh, from what I'm seeing, dude, from the first time that you and I spoke and across all the daddy channels that you've been on, it, you're growing, but you're just growing in the wrong direction, dude. And again, it's going to sound like a cop out, but anybody that wants to, they, they don't know our history. They don't know that you and I have known each other for years. And we've been back and forth on a lot of stuff. And it seems to me that you're trying to turn every single stone instead of just categorically recognizing the Quran for what it is. That's the, tr that's the, 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 the tough part for you. You are a overly, you're suffering from analysis paralysis through and through, dude. And I, I, I trust me, in your field. What's wrong with that? What's yeah, wrong? Yes, there that's is. That's what you have to do yes, even in the sciences. No, man, there is definitely something wrong with that, dude. There's definitely something wrong with that because eventually you're going to run out of time. That, and, you know, you're going to have to pull the trigger and you're still upon uncertainty. That's what's bugging me, dude, is, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you yourself just uh, admitted you you, you're uncertain about the mysterious letters. No, 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 no. And you're fine with it being Rob, mysterious and you don't have the I'm... answer for them. Rob, man. It's not that I'm uncertain about the letters is I don't spend my time on use uh, things that are of no use to me from a creedal standpoint. Categorically speaking, the difference between my uh, Iman, my faith and Islam is not going to change whether or not I knew what was behind Elif Lam meme or not, bro. It's not going to change. Would, okay, chat, question for you. Would it change? Well, how would your faith change if the claim by Reynolds that it's a Christian lectionary, that's where it came from originally, what would that do for, for your faith? And nothing, because it's a it's an empty claim. He has to provide if it's evidence true. for no, that. If it's true, it's if that claim true, turned out to be true. Rob, it's not true. If, if, okay, here's why it's difficult. Here's why it's difficult. What you're telling me is that God copied from some fifth century Christian guy is what you're saying in yeah. short. Okay. And well, I, that's what I'm realizing. Yeah. No, no, no. It's okay. That's your takeaway, right? right? So sure. You can call it your realization. And what I'm trying to tell you is that the amount of proof that you would need would include all the evidences to show that he's copying and then you would have to disprove the messengership of the Prophet and then you'd have to disprove the divinity of the Quran in another in, in, in a comprehensive way. Mm -hmm. So a couple things could have happened. Let's say, for example, I give you the benefit of the doubt and these things are uh, a copy. I would have to now research and say, was this a scribal error and how did this make it to the Quran? Right. I wouldn't now yep. all of a sudden jump, you know, you'd have to open up that can of worms, which again, you are already jumping to the conclusion. You are taking his claim as truth. And your 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 position is that the Prophet is not a messenger of God. Right? That's why you believe I, I'm not I'm not no no no. Just to clarify, I'm I'm not as a as a fellow theist. Okay. I'm not starting with the conclusion that, oh, he's a false prophet and blah, blah. Okay. And Reynolds, and when I look at Reynolds' explanation on that, I'm not at the same time going, ah, oh, therefore, that is what it is, you know, Christian lectionary. The point is, here's an argument, a hypothesis laid out, and it does you, have man. credence. I got to you. It. You can just keep it simple with me, dude. You don't right. need to go in depth. I, I, I'll give you, I'll give you as much rope as you want, man. You know? So... No, but I admit, I appreciate the 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 willingness to be you know critically minded on your part when you said if if that is the case. Sure. 
you're the, a rare example of someone who at least now you've voiced it that you're because okay. i would do the same with no, no, no. dude because i'm a truth seeker so i would of course say that if somebody were to disprove islam i would not be a muslim but here's the thing you can't disprove it because I have overwhelming evidence that the Prophet is indeed a messenger of God, period. And if he is, that means that the message that he brought is from God, period. Okay, now we get, we're, going, we're getting somewhere with this. Here, this okay. is important. In fact, I want to throw it back to you. If that is the case, okay, and I'm being genuine here in, in the statement, it's not a question, it's just a statement what you the 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 the, the um, what you have to do for me well i'm not it doesn't have just to be out you. with it man trust i've been i've overstayed by like an hour and a half all right all right but no what i mean is it's not just you it could be anyone but the challenge or the the hill or the the barrier that's holding me back is that if that is true you have to then convince me Mm -hmm. that what the Quran says about mm -hmm. past history with mm -hmm. all these legends that I've, you know, the tale mm -hmm. of, tales of the ancients, that that actually is true. If all of that's true, I'll become a Muslim. Okay. So check this out, Rob. You're never going to get me to convince you ever. And I'm telling you, you know why? It's not because not? of you. It's because I'm, because I'm, it's not my job to convince you, man. I don't guide people, bro. I just deliver the message and people accept it or not. No, a lot well, of I just clarify that statement saying thing. it doesn't have to be you. No, but what I'm on, saying on, is, on, hang on. You just made the statement, Muhammad on, is a prophet. Yes, he is. And you have all, you have access to the exact same information that I do, Rob. Yes. And you're way smarter than me. But you're when I look at the Quran and I see these legends, I can't go, oh, ah. therefore, Muhammad's a prophet. I wow. think to myself, this is legendary human stuff. Okay, so then so be it, dude. Then waliyadin, bro. I'm not gonna convince you, dude. I'm not. I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy that's gonna sit there and read a bunch of papers for you and then be like, here's my homework, sir. I don't do that, dude. I don't do that, man. Well, that as a Christian, just to clarify, here's another difference in our religions. When people ask me that in email or they, you know, when even atheists or critics. Uh -huh. I do do that. That's a service. That's a that's a sort of form of discipleship that I do. Like when Jesus goes and washes the feet of others, mm -hmm. he stoops down to that servant level. Mm -hmm. I'm mandated as a Christian to do that. I'm yeah, and I'm not. I'm not mandated. I'm not mandated to be at that type of service, dude. I'm not because a, a this is why I find Christianity more beautiful. Okay, fine. So be it. Then you're picking your religion based off of the beauty that you find in it and you're choosing to ignore everything else. You know, it's it's pretty wild to me, man, that you would say something like that uh, after challenging me to bring all of the intellectual stuff that you need, not me, but you. So you're trying to have me problem solve for you. And then if it, it's like you're telling me, go find me a rock. And then you're not going to be happy with the rock that I bring, or you're going to have some type of complaint about the rock that I bring. And you're going to be like, it's not good enough. When all I'm telling you to do is to read the Quran, stop looking at other commentaries and reflect on yourself. I'm giving you the easiest assignment and you won't even take the step. How about, how about, how about to modify that analogy of the rock? How about I say it this way? How about I'm already in the field of, Say if it's geology, I'm actually in the field and here you are a stranger, so to speak, but you have the tools as well to help me in that search. And you're not, and I'm not just sitting back going, okay, go on, do this bit for me. We are both in it together. We are That's... in it together, Rob, but you're not cooperating. Of course I'm cooperating. cooperating. No, you're not, dude. I'm and, bringing and up the very eyes. I have to end it with this, me. dude. I'm sorry. I have to end it with this. You're not right, cooperating okay. because... Two years ago, close to two years ago, I asked you just to sit down and read the full Quran. And you're just now on chapter eight and you're reading all these commentaries and you're still stuck on the same points. You're not reading the book in its entirety. No, 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 no. I've read the whole Quran. I'm now systematically going through each verse okay. to see what. And I misunderstood then. I apologize. I misunderstood because I thought that you, and, you know. And, but I'm doing it publicly. So on my channel, I've been doing it public. Like I've been reading every verse carefully and I've been teasing out the best explanations for every ayah. Rob, you and... can't tell me you're teasing out the best explanations when you're going to Shia scholars. 
You just can't, yes. dude. You can't. No, it's manage. not just Shia scholars. It's also it, Ibn Kathir. I know, but you can't blend the two. You have a heretical group. I'm not blending the two. I love you, dude, but I can't, man. I really do, dude. I can't. Like, it, you're, you're. All I can tell you is, is that uh, uh, it's not a big requirement, man. It's not a big requirement. You don't need all this uh, data that you're trying to extrapolate to history. It's a book of revelation. It's a book of science. Well, shows the straight way, right? I'm sorry. Show us a straight way, right? Without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, dude. Right. So, Quran, show me so the straight way. To, I'm, so, I'm yes. in the. I'm, it, if this is okay. my test to, to do it in the most intricate way, let's see what then, happens. Then so right? be it, dude. But you know what, man? If you if you were just to listen to what it says in regards to your reasoning, you would know that you're approaching it wrong categorically, and you can solve yourself a whole bunch of headache and a whole bunch of over analysis in the wrong direction. If you would just approach it categorically, if but you if, but, if, but if what I've been discovering is true, then you have to also be uh, true to yourself. I am to true me. to myself, but what you're discovering is not true, Rob. What you're discovering is feeding into your own desires, and it's feeding into what you want for content, and that's fine for you if you feel so. But in regards to your position on the truth, it's not fine, Rob. That's what I'm trying to tell you, dude. And I'm not here to co-correct your path, man. I'm here to, you know, exchange ideas. And I'm here to tell you exactly where you've gone wrong. But, dude, you've talked to people that are much more intelligent and much more versed than me. And they've all unanimously have told you you are barking down the wrong path. And you're still doing it. How much more of a wake-up call do you need, bud? Come on. Nobody's coming into your field of, of the sciences that you're an expert in claiming to know more than you. But when you're coming in and you're, ta and you're talking about these heretical groups and these Christian scholars having an opinion on the Quran and your hang up is whether Elif Lamim needs an explanation or not, dude, you're in on the thick end, man. You really are. It's just, it's not the approach to go, dude. You should know that by now. It's okay to not know certain things and to absorb knowledge from, from, from people that do know. Look, dude. The Muslim Lantern is like one of the nicest guys I know, seriously. And I saw your conversation with him and subhanAllah, bro, but his knowledge, dude, he's forgotten more things than I've remembered in my life. Let's just put it that way. He is extremely knowledgeable, extremely. And the fact that you had an exchange with him and you didn't take it for what it was worth and you're trying to educate him and, and you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, basically well, well, off the guy up. But, dude, you really missed a big opportunity there to just kind of humble yourself, man. Wait, 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 wait. I see what you're saying. But this is just please at least just be open to the possibility that the guy could be at, could just have been reading up a script. No offense to him. But the, here's the script. Test him out, in bro. that discussion, in that discussion, I like actually I like, him. wait, let me finish. In that discussion, I liked the whole discussion. I have no issue with the whole discussion. A lot of, I see a lot of comments and Muslims say, oh, mm -hmm. he beat you, he beat you. I don't think so. That discussion Rob, was not about him, and here's why. With me, but because he don't, ended, I don't have time for it, dude. I really don't have time ended, for it. I, I'll, I I'll, I'll, I'll conclude with this statement. He ended okay, I'm by 30 seconds. I'm going to give you the last word. I'm going to give you the last word. I'm going to give you the last word. Go ahead. Okay. He ended that discussion because it, it di finally diverged to, in this case, the Pharaoh and all that. And then I was shocked to hear someone like him, who you say is very intelligent and knowledgeable and so on, to utilize an already debunked a fringe a French doctor who claimed to be an Egyptologist as evidence that Ramsey is the second round. That is no Egyptologist accepts that, and and that's a wrong statement. So even I was shocked that Muslim Lantern would go there. Okay, but there it is. So, but I appreciate you having this two-hour chat with me. I really do. No worries, man. Thanks, for Ramadan Thanks for you. For you Thanks, man. Thank you. Well, and yeah. Thank you, dude. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us and, and, you know, forgive us for any shortcomings. Like I say, um, you know, forgive me if I offended you in any way, shape or form. Any mistakes that I said was from shaitan and from myself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his uh, beloved messenger, alayhi salatu salam, are free from any blemishes. Thanks for coming on board. Always a pleasure talking to you otherwise. Believe Likewise, me. bro. Likewise, man. I'll see you next time, bud.